Hey, hi again. My name's Lindsay and you're with Art with Lindsay. Today, we're gonna paint this, I'm gonna call it a summer, um, I don't know, sunset, because I'm not really sure where the sun's at and I'm just deciding on a name right this second. So, when we do this, I'm gonna use a 16 by 20 canvas. I have two brushes. I have a large brush and a small brush. Just off to my right here, I've got a little bit of paper towel, or in my case, just sort of a used rag. And when I work with it, I like to have a little bit of extra paper towel, just in case I make a mess, I can clean it up pretty quickly. We're gonna be using acrylics today, like every day. And when I do this, today I've only got four colors. So I've got a whole bunch of white, because I'm gonna use that right out of the gate. And then I've got the primary colors, whoa. Red, yellow, and blue. So with these, I've always got a little bit of extra and then I've got a little black just in case I feel like using it a little later. I always wanna have a water cup so I can wash my brushes. And then in between steps, I'm gonna throw my brushes in the water cup just to make sure they don't dry out too much. Uh, when I do these, I'm gonna work kind of quickly. So I've got a really sort of a medium sized canvas and I wanna make sure that I can get, that you can get through it well enough. So what I wanna do is suggest maybe trying this out on a piece of paper first and then you can go over to a canvas. I like to do little sketch paintings just to sort of work out composition and stuff because I don't always feel super creative. And that way I can kind of take stuff that I like from it and then change the stuff that I don't when I come over to the canvas and make it a little more important. While I'm doing this, you're gonna see a little button at the bottom. It's a um, donation or a tip thing. If you feel free to, or if you feel like coming on and uh, donating a little bit, I usually do these for parties. So that's not happening right now. We're gonna try this out and see how it goes. I think we're ready to get started. Oh, I've got paper plates. I don't call paper plates paper plates here. I call them painter's palettes. So um, I've got one here and then I have an extra one to mix. The way that I'm gonna do this painting today, I'm not gonna mix a whole lot of colors. We're gonna sort of do this thing called blending on canvas. Uh, when I do the first couple of steps, I'm gonna work on the background. The background is gonna be not only the sky, but also the water. And I wanna do this sort of quickly because I wanna get to the paint before it dries too much. So when I go into this, I'm gonna use my big brush and I'm gonna give the entire canvas just a good coat of white paint. So um, I've got a little bit of water on my brush. I'm always gonna dab my napkin and then I'm really gonna load this guy up here. And then I'm gonna come over and get a generous amount of white paint. And I'm just gonna work my way around here. As I'm going through this, you can kind of see, it'll kind of get thicker and thinner as we go. And that's okay, because when I put that other color on there, it'll mix into it a little bit better. I like to start at the top and work my way down just because I feel like the paint dries a little bit uh, faster wherever you started from. And I wanna start with that top almost immediately after I'm done with this. All right. Almost down all the way to the bottom. And then I think what I'm gonna do is start with yellow. Yellow is a very bright color and it gets messy pretty quickly. So before I do any of the other colors, I'm actually gonna do what I call the dirty dip. The dirty dip is where you take your dirty brush. I'm gonna go right into my yellow here. I'm just gonna get a little bit at a time. And then I'm gonna find the center of my canvas here and I'm gonna do vertical strokes going all the way up and I'm just gonna let it sort of drift away. So here's about half. I'm gonna go all the way across and really let it kind of mix in here. And I'm gonna go up. I keep sort of dragging over the same spots because I want some places to be a little heavier and then some to be a little bit lighter. It's gonna give me the illusion of clouds and stuff in the background. And then as I'm drifting up to the top, I'm gonna let it stay maybe four-ish fingers from the top so that when I put this red in that we're gonna do right now, I get a nice little section that's nice and clean. So I'm gonna clean out my big brush. I'm gonna smash down, clean it out really well. And then when I dry it, I'm gonna give it a little squeeze up by the metal. There's a lot of water that kind of hangs out right into the metal part, and then if your paint isn't super bright as you're working through it, it's probably because you've got some dirty water up in there. All right, 
So I've got a clean big brush. I'm gonna take just a little bit of red here. And I'm gonna start at the top. In the same situation that I did with the yellow, I'm gonna sort of blend down. But I don't wanna go too far into it. So once I get around halfway down uh, into the yellow, I'm gonna stop. So I've got my nice red color is blending into that white in the background. I'm gonna drag it down here. It's gonna start to make some orangey colors. And I'm gonna stop before I get too far down. And I'm gonna work myself right back up. That's gonna smooth out anything that wasn't quite as nice as the other spots there. There we go. All right, and before this becomes just one solid color, I'm gonna stop. If I keep going into it, it's gonna look like a really pretty coral color and there's not gonna be any sort of variation between yellow and uh, red, so I'm gonna stop now. I wanna talk about the water section. So with the water section, it's gonna be the same situation. I wanna clean my brush out, so I start with a nice clean brush. I'm gonna go from now, our horizon line, and work my way down. I'm gonna leave about four-ish fingers from the bottom before I, um, so that I let that yellow drip, drift away, drop off. So I'm cleaning my big brush. Give a little tap, a little squeeze up by the metal. And I'm gonna go back into yellow. So if it makes you feel better, you can start right over top of where that yellow was. And then I'm gonna start dragging it down. My paint is starting to dry just a little bit, so I have a trick for that. I'm gonna grab just a little bit of water so it doesn't drip. I'm going to uh, tap my napkin. And I'm gonna go a little bit more of a blend here. There we go. So now I've got yellow, it goes into an orange up to sort of a pinky red color. And then down in the water, it kind of drifts away into this uh, nice white color. I'm gonna do a dirty dip again. So I've got my dirty yellow brush. I'm gonna go in and get some blue paint. It's not gonna take over too much. So now I'm gonna start on the bottom and work my way up. As I'm working through here, it's gonna give me a nice soft blue and it'll transition into a nice orange or a nice uh, greeny color. I'm gonna grab a little bit of water, tap on my napkin. It's gonna help me push into those little nooks and crannies. There we go. All right. So I don't wanna noodle, but I do wanna get these little crannies down at the bottom here, and I'm gonna call it good. So when I'm blending colors, if I'm trying to really mix those colors in, I'm gonna push down really hard to kind of get that paint on there. And then when I wanna smooth out the colors, so if there's like a really harsh line, I'm gonna hold my breath, my breath, I'm gonna hold my brush a little bit farther back, give it a nice little drag here. Now I've got a better transition. I'm a little lopsided, so I'll fix that too. All right, before I get into the noodling, which I might be on the cusp of. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this big brush off. Anytime I'm done with a big section of paint, I wanna give it a little gander here, so I'm gonna lean back, I'm gonna look at it and see how I like it. It looks pretty good, but the yellow on this one is really bright, which isn't a bad thing, it's just not what I'm going for. So I'm gonna rinse out my brush. I really wanna make sure it's clean so I don't ruin my whole situation here. And this might be noodling, but just in case yours is super, super dark yellow, I'm gonna take some white and I'm just gonna sort of pass through this. I'm gonna move around in sort of circular-ish sections here just so that it softens more sections, but I like that I leave some of these a little bit harsh. So now I'm gonna call my background good and we can talk about our mountains. So with the mountains, we're gonna do three layers here. I've got one really far in the back, and that one is gonna be our lightest color. And then as I come forward, it's gonna get a little bit darker. So what we need to do is mix this nice purpley color, and then we'll sort of make variations of that as we go. I'm gonna use my big brush to mix the color with, and I wanna make sure it doesn't turn brown. So cleaning my big brush out really well again. I'm gonna dry it off on my napkin and then we're gonna mix. So this is gonna be three colors. I'm sure you guessed by now, but it's gonna be a little bit of red and a little bit of blue. But I also wanna get a nice scoop of white. 
So it's about equal parts red and blue, and then I threw in a little bit of white just to help me sort of see what that color is gonna look like. There we go. It's super duper dark. So I'm gonna grab just a little bit more white, go back into it here, and I'm gonna call this good. All right, so I'm gonna scrape my big brush off so I get enough paint off of this so I don't waste a bunch of it. And I'm throwing this guy in the water because I'm going to switch over to my small brush. With the small brush, we're going to decide on a horizon line for real this time. I said it was about halfway up the canvas, but I'm going to actually put it a little bit lower here. So if you don't know where to go, I'm going to find the middle of the canvas and then move down two or three ish fingers before it turns into green. And I want to give myself a tally. That's just going to be where I start. So as I'm going to start from the tally, I'm going to work my way across. I'm going to try to go in a straight-ish line. If it gets a little bit fuzzy, that's okay. We got a little bit of wiggle room when we get into it. But I want to go across, and I'm going to leave about three to four fingers on my right edge because it drifts away a little bit over here. It's even maybe two-ish fingers. It's really thin, so I'm going to try to keep my first line as thin as I can, and then we'll do this nice mountain-y edge. So I'm starting from what I'm calling now my horizon line. I'm gonna go over. And you can see how I flick my wrist right at the end. That's gonna give me that nice little taper. So wherever I decide to end, I'm just gonna stop with that little bit of taper. There we go. There's my line. So now anytime I do my mountain range, I like to say I hone my Red Bull because I want to give my hand just a little bit of a shake or a jitter. And I'm going to start on the edge here. I'm going to start out real thin. And I'm going to jitter and go up a little bit. Hopefully you notice that your background yellow is mixing in just a little bit to that purple and giving us that lighter color, which is awesome. I'm going to fill this in. I'm still using my small brush. And as I'm doing it, I'm not trying to fill it in super solid because one solid color isn't really interesting. So I like to give it a bunch of different sort of variations of this color here. And remember, it's a mountain range, so it's not super soft and perfect. Almost done with this. And then again, like I did with the background, I'm going to do what I call the artist lean. There we go. And I'm going to go a little farther to get that nice tapered end. There we go. So mine lightened up quite a bit. There's a little section over here that's a little bit dark. If you don't want it to be super duper dark, we can take just a little bit of white, just a little, and sort of mix into that. Again, remember mixing is pushing down a little hard. And then to get that nice little bit of a blend, nice soft little bit amount of pressure here. We have our first set of mountains. So as we move down, that background is going to still kind of blend into it a little bit. Go with it. What we're going to do is a couple of layers probably. I want to start with my second hill or mountain range here. And I'm going to keep with my small brush. This one's about maybe three-ish fingers down and I'm gonna make a line in between. So what we're seeing here is the mound range, but also a reflection. So this time, I'm gonna go down about three ish or four fingers. I'm gonna make a nice little line here, and that's gonna be the middle of this big shape that we see. So I've got this line down in the middle here, that's that water line. And now I'm not gonna think about the reflection just yet. I'm gonna start from an edge and I wanna make myself a mountain range. I'm gonna go right over that edge this time. And I'll tell you why here in just a second. So as I'm filling this in, just like if you were doing this on paper, you've got one to look at. So the one that I did before, my first mountain range, this weird little section right here where it's really close to that background mountain and that foreground mountain sort of almost touch. It's almost what we call a tangent and it bothers your eye whether you know it or not. So I just wanted to kind of drag through that so that it doesn't give me that same headache that that first one did. As I'm going through here, I'm gonna try to move this paint around sort of haphazardly 
because the texture is what gives me that kind of feel of different things going on in your mountain range. Once this is filled in, I'm going to talk about the reflection of the water. When I'm doing that, I don't need to worry about making the exact little bumps as the top. I do want it to sort of look similar to the one that was above it, but I've got little tips and tricks on how to work it out if it doesn't look exactly the same. So I'm going to go through here and do what I call my finesse round. Just a nice light hand running through and making sure it's blended where I want it to be and not where I want it to be. And now I have a new mountain range. To get that uh, reflection, I'm going to start where I ended. I want to give me a little bit better of a tip there. And then I'm going to try to mimic it. Doesn't have to be as tall doesn't even need to be the same thing. I just want it to kind of look like it. So when I lean back, I can tell, yeah, it's the same-ish thing. And I'm gonna fill this in. So before I go back into this one, I'm gonna let it dry just a little bit. And I'm gonna move over to the second one. When we do that, keep in mind where your original water line was because we're gonna bring that back. But I want to do that second one while we let this one dry a little bit. So the second foreground mountain, it's just a little guy coming out from the bottom. So if you want like a size range, I'm going to say about three to two, two to three fingers from the bottom. And it's just going to go in a little bit here. And I'm going to give it a little wobble. All right, there we go. And just like the first or the second mountain range we did here, I'm going to do that reflection and I'm going to fill that in. All right. So now I have very light, very light little mountains and I want to darken it in. I've got enough color here. I'm just going to kind of scrape my color together because I want to take one more lap through the mountain parts and not the reflections. So we've got one sort of shape, but it's two things. So it's our mountains and our reflection. So I'm gonna bring that water line back. Hopefully it's dried enough I can do this. And then with a very light hand and a good amount of paint, I want to at least on that horizon line or our water line here, make that a little bit darker so that you can see where the water ends and your mountains begin. If it's not super duper dark, like this one isn't super dark, I'm not gonna worry about it too much because we're gonna put wake in our water. And when I do the wake in the water, I can put a little bit of wake right on our water line and it's really gonna bring that out and make you see that it's two things. So I've got one more little mountain over here. Wow, it's a lot of paint. With this, I'm just making the top part darker than the bottom and hopefully you can see it a little bit better that it's a mountain and then it's reflection. So I'm gonna take a nice little artist lean. I can see it, which is great, but I don't know how well you're gonna see it. So I'm doing my nice little artist lean. If I wanted to spend a bunch of time on it, I might go in and kind of give me a little bit of a cleaner line in here. And then if I had a little more time, I'd probably let this dry a little bit and put an extra coat over where my mountain ranges are, but maybe I'll come back to that later. I'm not gonna worry about it too much right this second because the next part is important that our reflection isn't all the way dry. So what I'm gonna do is use my small brush, but I'm gonna clean it out because I want to do some wakes. So the wake is going to be straight sort of lines, vertical lines going back and forth. I don't want them to go all the way across the canvas. I'm just going to kind of jet back and forth. And I want to go across my water line in my mountains. And then I'm also going to do a couple of little strokes that start from inside my mountain range and come out. I don't want to think about it a lot, so I'm going to go ahead and load up my brush here. I've got a bunch of white on here, and the first thing I'm going to do is do this nice back and forth stroke, and I'm going to go right on my waterline. You can see it's already starting to blend in, which is great. I'm going to do both of these here while I've got a bunch of paint on my brush. 
And then with that same motion, I'm gonna start from inside my mountain range and I'm gonna do a few streaks going out. Inside my mountain range, I'm gonna do a few little streaks coming out. So I didn't do it up at the top, the first one, because it's so far back there, you wouldn't see it. If you wanted to, you absolutely can. And I'm almost done. I wanna do two-ish more things. So the whole water situation here is, I'm not gonna say it's one solid color, but I'm gonna break it up with a little bit of wake. You can see it on this first one, it's sort of dry brushed on, and I'm gonna do that with my big brush. So with my big brush, I'm drying it off, giving it a little squeeze, and I'm gonna use white paint. But I don't wanna have a lot of paint at a time, so what I'm gonna do is dip just the tip into my white, both sides here, and then I'm gonna tap on the edge. And what happens there is I'm loading my brush up, but I don't want too much, so I'm just gonna sort of scrape it off. And then I'm gonna hold my brush sort of a little more parallel with my canvas, and I'm gonna streak back and forth. I'm gonna look out for my mountains because I don't wanna hit the wrong places. But as I go through, I've got a really light hand, and I'm just sort of dragging that back and forth. That's gonna give me a look like I've got some more motion going on. I'm gonna get a little more, so I'm tapping in my paint. I'm gonna tap on my plate using the corner of my large brush, and I'm just gonna streak through a little bit here before it gets too crazy. I have a weird little stroke right there that I'm gonna go ahead and cover up. All right. So taking one last look here. I like it. I can tell where my mountains are and my water, the reflection starts. There's one last thing that your painting needs and that's a signature. So there's two ways to sign your painting and then there's a way to cheat. The first way to sign, I'm just gonna use my paper plate here. Fold this over so I don't drip anything. Both ways, I'm gonna use my small brush. But the first one, I'm gonna use the brush side, take a little bit of water, and I'm gonna thin out my regular paint. And then when I go into this, I can just give myself little squiggles, sign whatever you want. This is backwards, but there's my little signature. The watering down pushes the paint a little bit farther than if you were to just get a glob of paint and go for it. So the second way to do this, I use the back end of my brush. So the little wood bit is really nice to give you a little more control, but it takes a little more time. So what I'm gonna do is get a nice glob of paint. Here, I'll do it over here. And then I'm gonna drag that little bead of paint across my canvas rather than actually carving into it, which you might end up doing if you've got patience like me, which is none. So you can see how it goes here. And give it a little signature. A lot of people sign on the bottom. You can sign on the edge. If you're not gonna put your painting in a frame, I would paint that edge right there. And then while you're painting, if you liked it, let me know. Like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll make more. If you really like it, I would appreciate a tip or a donation. I've got a PayPal me, Lindsay Lieberman, PayPal me button down in the description. And everything that you uh, donate comes to me and then helping me push this along. The people that helped me today were John Christensen from Christensen Media. He's in a little box back there helping me out. And then uh, Sacramento Media Center. I do some janitorial service and some sort of jack of all tradesy stuff here. And they were happy enough to sort of know that I didn't have the supplies or equipment to do this at my house. So we're here. It's all of me and John alone in a studio and we're gonna go run around and cause some trouble. So thanks for joining me. I hope you come back. I think we're gonna do this again next Sunday. If you're around, grab some paint. Tell me what you want to see painted next. I don't have any ideas yet. Um, I hope to see you later. Thanks for joining me. Beer. <laughs>